Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's MGL here with our next session. This one is all based on what is entailed for phase three of your City and Guild 9189 plumbing qualification apprenticeship, so to speak. Um, we've already covered phase one and we've already covered phase two. If you want to go back and check those videos out, I do recommend that you do. Don't just jump to phase three. Check out one, two and three uh, uh, in order then you'll have a better understanding of what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and how it needs to be done. Okay, so, remember, if you enjoy this and found this video helpful, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, even subscribe and help support the channel as we go on. Now, the 9189, as I say, is the new City and Girls qualification for apprenticeships. It's split into four phases. Phase one to three cover the core content, the plumbing part of the course. And phase four is your pathway. So you can go for environmental technology, natural gas, off tech for oil or heat as for solid fuel. But it depends on what the college you go to or place that you go to for this qualification, what they are offering. In the college that I work in, we are offering natural gas. I will cover these phases as well later on. So I will cover phase fours for environmental, for natural gas, off tech and heat ass after we have finished all the core stuff. Like I've said before, if you've got to phase one and you've read for all this, you are fully aware that this happens. Your candidate must be registered. So you must again, when you get to phase three, check that they are still registered. They cannot take any assessments until then. They must complete the previous phases before moving on to the next phase. So they must pass phase one to get to phase two. And they must pass phase two to get to phase three and phase three to phase four. Please make sure that you abide by these rules. Resits and retakes like you should be getting used to this now if you've already watched one and two. Same principle, always the same. You have 14 days to take a retake if you fail your first go in assessments or exams. If you fail your second go, you cannot retake it for 60 days after that date. So you cannot take it before, you must take it after the 60 days because you should be getting retrained or doing some self-study. Um, after that 60 days, you can take your third go. But again, if you fail your third go, you're allowed one more go within the 14 days. And if you are unsuccessful on that one, you will go back to the start of the phase that you failed on. So we're not going to send you all the way back to phase one or phase two. You failed phase three, so we're only going to send you back to phase three. But please be aware, some bosses or employers that you work for are not going to be happy and you may lose your job for failing that fourth time. So please put maximum effort in. Okay, and I'm just going to highlight that again just to make sure that everybody is aware. So, core part of this qualification, I'm just going to put my little laser pen on. The core part of this qualification, as I say, is split into three. We've already covered one in a previous video and two in the previous video. They will be linked at the end of this video. If you haven't seen them, please go back to them and watch them. So, in phase three, We've got these components here that we must... Oh, the little point is going nuts again. Come on. Where are you? <laughs> there we go. I've got it. Right. So what do we need for this one? So all the three books that you've got from phase two, you must ha definitely have them for phase three. If you do not have these books, how on earth did you get through phase two? You must have these books. Please get them. Please study them. Right, so phase three, what's in the core content? We've already covered all your common plumbing processes, your sciences and all that kind of thing already. So all that we're going to be focusing on now is finishing off what's left for cold water. Nice and straightforward. So we'll be finishing off four, five, six and seven for cold water. Then hot water. We'll be finishing off whatever's left for hot water. Three, four, five, six of learner outcomes must be finished of hot water. 
Then in the central eating, this is the more bulky bit. This is the bit that's going to be the hardest bit of information we are going to be covering. We'll finish off learner outcome one. We've covered again two, three, four, five, six. We're finishing off all of central heating. Rainwater. We'll be finishing off the last of the rainwater. The designs and everything else when it comes to correct sizing and fault diagnostics. Okay, yeah, I know rainwater systems, not the hardest thing to fault find on, but you've got to cover it. Then sanitation. Again, we'll finish off all of the sanitation. We'll put it all into its little nice, neat boxes and covering servicing and maintenance. Now, you must complete environmental tech at this point here. Now, you can see phase three is a very heavy ended part of this course. And as you can imagine, the end on exam is going to be a corker for this one. So bear that one in mind. So we've got all the learner outcomes of environmental technology. How I tend to do it is I will get used to work on projects. It's up to your tutors how they do it, whether they're going to teach you it or whichever way they choose to do it, you must cover it. Then you've got domestic fuels. This is to help you before you go into your phase four parts. OK, so if you're doing environmental, the environmental section will help you out. If you're doing um, heat ass, off tech or natural gas, uh, gas safe, this will help you into that bit. It's going to just give you the introductions to this part of the qualification. So we're going to look at the factors affecting fuel selection. Know the combustion process of fuel supply systems. So we're going to go for all them kind of things. Know the principles of chimneys and flue systems. So again, you're going to know how these parts work. Now the bit that me as a tutor, I can teach it. I am qualified to teach it. But there are other tutors out there that may not be qualified. And then, oh, I've made a mistake on there. I've left the two and the three. I will fix that out at a later date. It does recommend that you have an electrical qualified teacher doing this part of the course. It is very in-depth, but there are also certain parts that they can't teach you that a heating engineer or gas engineer or plumber of many years experience will cover. So you might need to chop and change on who does what. It's the hardest part of this qualification, I would say, on this core part, because you're gonna to have to know about wiring the safety procedures, uh, testing and identifying faults. So it's going to be a bit of a corker. Now, once you get through the electrical part, though, that is it finished. So all you've got left now are the last parts. You have an online multiple choice exam. You have your practical assessment to complete. You have your evidence of your portfolio. So all your assessment folder must be fully complete and signed off and IV'd. And your work log for your on-site must be completed. If this is not completed, you cannot go on to phase four until that work log is completed. So bear this in mind. Uh, if you're a tutor, make sure that your on-site people are aware that this work log book needs to be complete or they cannot go to phase four. Now, the reason that this is in place is when you go to your next phase four, they get a new portfolio of evidence, which they must work on within a year. So that's why this one must be finished. They don't want anybody moving on until it's finished. So let's have a look at the exam. The exam is again 30 minutes long, so it's only a little exam. It's 60 minutes, it's closed at uh, 60% pass rate, it's closed book, so again, you've got no notes of reference. It's covering environmental technology, domestic fuel systems, and electrical. All the central heating and the hot water and the cold water is for the assessments which are coming up. Okay, they are the assessment parts. This is the hardest part, as I say, that's going to come up in your exam. So environmental, we have four questions. Fuel, we've got four, eight, twelve on our fuel, fuels. So you're going to have four questions on fluing, four questions on fuel types and factors that affect your selection. And you're also going to have four questions on electrics. I don't know what these questions are going to be. 
if your tutor does fair play to them but i don't and that personally if you trained correctly oh god my little point has gone again there we go if you've done your studying you should be all right on this and if you've got the city and guilds books as reference you should be sorted and plus hopefully i'll have some extra videos on here for you to help you when you get to this part of the course now the assessment this is the biggie part this is all going to be done in 12 hours okay and it is a pass fail boundary so again Remember, you get four goes at these. If you fail any part of it, you go back to the beginning and you have to restart it, but not after four, within 14 days and so on and so on. So, as you can see here, you've got assessments on cold water, hot water, central heating, rainwater, sanitation and electrical. Okay, there's a lot of assessments. Now, the electrical one. Perform pre installation activity prior to undertaking electrical work on a plumbing domestic heating system so this is safe isolations preliminary electrical safety checks the lot you've got to install an s plan or a y plan or an s plan plus heating system and wiring then you've got to decommission it. Then you've got to fault find it. So you've really got a lot to cover on this one. Sanitation, not going to worry too much about that one. You should be fairly good at this one by the time you get to the end of phase three. Same with rainwater, not the most complicated, but making sure that you abide by the designer side of this course, you should be all right. Central leasing, biggie bit. So we've got all that to worry about. And again, my little pointer's got stuck again now. <laughs> Ah. all the joys of technology right but we're going to do it here then so that is that part complete it's not letting me move on there we go moving on your logbook your on workshop portfolio your tutor is going to have that in hand but you've got to make sure everything is filled in everything is passed all dotted and t's are crossed everything will be fine but your on-site portfolio, this must be completed. So you should have started this in phase one, where hopefully your on-site assessors has already completed the health and safety part in the first part. Then you've got your phase twos. You should be trying to hit a job off these, or at least two jobs off these, a year. Okay? By the time you get to phase three, it should be all signed, sealed and delivered. And your assessor may only have one or two assessments left to complete on site. That is the best way to be when you get to this situation. There's nothing more frustrating for yourselves and your tutor trying to get you onto phase four where you haven't finished the on site portfolio and we're waiting for you. So bear that one in mind. I don't know why this is suddenly playing up on that one. So we're going to ignore it and carry on. Now, in summary, we've got all of this. I've covered this previously, but I'm going to go over it again. You must complete every exam, every assessment at the end of each phase. If you do not complete them on your fourth go, you go back to the beginning of that phase. You have four of these phases to complete. Phases one, two, and three are your core plumbing phases. And phase four is your chosen pathway, whether it is environmental, gas, oil, or solid fuels. You pick your routes and whatever the colleges or place of education is offering. But when you finish your phase four, remember, that does not mean you are a qualified plumber yet. You have what's known as an endpoint assessment. This is done by an independent assessor. It's like having your ACS. Again, this assessor has nothing to do with the college, has nothing to do with you, he's never met you before. He is there to check that you have the required understanding to call yourself a plumber. There will be various exams and tests that you must complete and assessments to complete. I don't know what they are. Your tutor might know what they are, but I don't know what they are because I, I haven't got that far yet with my students. But I've got a rough idea what they could be, and it could be based on some of the assessments that you do in your workbooks. Uh, it could be anything on to do with... They can pick the subject, you see. They can pick whether it's a sanitation assessment or a central heating assessment. You could be expected to do anything when you walk into this place. So you need to be good when you get there. 
Once you complete the endpoint assessment though, you are now a fully qualified plumber. You will have your water regulations, you will have your unvented qualification, you'll also have whatever gas safe, off tech, heat ass registration that you required at the end of this. So if you do get this far, well done. All right, so that is the end of that one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have a member and you found it useful, remember, drop a like, leave a comment, and even subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you for watching, and hopefully we will have some more videos coming out for you soon. And I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.